Hello, good afternoon. We are here with Tina Tuominen, lecturer in translation studies at the University of Glasgow, but originally from the University of Tampere in Finland. Hello. Hello. So tell us about why you became interested in translation first, and then why did you specialize in subtitling? I think my history of uh, being interested in translation is, is kind of typical. I, I was originally, as a child, I was interested in languages. I studied several languages in school and I was quite good at it and I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed reading literature in, in different languages and and just as a way of combining it, the, the idea actually came from my mother. She said, well, why don't you become a literary translator? And that sounded like a nice enough idea to me. So, so I, I, I went to the University of Tampere, where it was possible to study translation from, from the first year on. So I, I went there to study uh, translation in English. And, and I studied uh, or translation between English and Finnish. Uh, and I studied uh, English translation as my major and, and also a bit of Russian translation as my minor. And that's how I got started. But then yeah, towards the end of my studies, when I got my, my MA, I, uh, I found my first translation job as a subtitler. So, and, and found that I enjoyed that. And it was an interesting challenge and, and a fun thing to do with my translation skills. So, so I became... Uh, became a subtitler rather than literary translator, which had been my original plan. But but I'm pretty happy with where I ended up. Mm. But you have also come from an environment, Finland, with a long tradition of subtitling. Yes. To another one that doesn't have that much of a tradition in audiovisual translation in general. So how did you confront that difference? Uh, it, it, it was something that I thought about quite a lot when I moved here and, and knowing that uh, my students, the translation students here, would probably have a slightly different background uh, to the students I used to teach in Finland, who who had grown up watching uh, sub subtitled programs and whose first dream maybe had been to <laughs> to become a subtitler. Uh, but when I came here, I noticed that it, it wasn't necessarily that, that different. I, I still have students whose dream it is to become a subtitler and, and who are very interested in subtitles as a, as a form of communication. So, so in that sense, I, I'm lucky enough to be able to work with people who are very motivated and, and who are interested uh, in, in, in this uh, method of translation. So, so it mo the difference maybe wasn't as dramatic as, as I might have expected, but obviously uh, I, I do want to be careful about what I expect uh, people to know or have experienced about subtitles here. So, so I, I think maybe maybe my approach was to to make sure to uh, explain everything uh, in detail and and not not to ex expect the students to have previous uh, knowledge of of subtitles as, or, or maybe uh, things like the conventions of subtitles, like how, how you punctuate subtitles or when, when you use italics or th things like that, which you kind of internalize if, if you grow up watching subtitles, but you maybe do not internalize quite so much if, if you don't watch them all the time. So, so maybe this, this idea of trying to uh, direct my teaching to an audience that, that that has less experience and and perhaps uh, could benefit from from a more uh, more detailed explanation of of what subtitling is like but 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 i think ultimately it hasn't been that different i i haven't seen any any huge culture shocks there but it, but it's obviously it's also a matter of different languages and when we talk about uh, students whose first language language is english uh, it's it's different from students whose first language is is a small language like Finnish and and where you deal with translations all the time in in different formats and and where you are used to no one speaking your language and 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 having to ha having having to work with foreign languages all the time. So it's a it's it's a different uh, dynamic, but but it's it's also quite interesting to see see the other side of of this dynamic between larger and smaller languages. And when you were working as a professional translator, did you have the chance to reflect about the working conditions of translators 
in general and subtitles more particularly? Well, yes, and in a way I feel like I was forced to reflect on them because uh, the working conditions, obviously, they are something you confront all the time, whether you have enough time to uh, to do your job properly, whether whether you, you have contacts with your colleagues, uh, what kinds of uh, uh, contracts you have with your clients, things like that, that comes up all the time. But as a subtitler, it was a specifically interesting question because while while I was working as a subtitler, it was a time of, and it still continues to be a time of big changes in the field where uh, this big uh, global, international, multinational uh, subtitling agencies come into the field and uh, insert new kinds of working processes and new kinds of practices and new kinds of payment practices and uh, different kinds of contracts and questions of um, of confidentiality, all, all kinds of questions that have to do with the in how the work is done. So, so there's this uh, friction between old traditions of a smaller scale production uh, and a, sm- a smaller scale uh, system, and and then this new uh, global system, which doesn't work quite quite the same way as uh, as the traditional one so so i feel like when i entered the field i i came into it at this point when things were changing quite rapidly and quite drastically so so i did reflect on it and i i lived through it in in some ways and one of your lines of research is focused on reception of translation in fact you have recently published with two other authors user centered translation a monograph published by routledge in 2015. Could you tell us something else about it? Oh yes, uh, uh, the other two, two authors are also from Tampere, Tytti Suojanen and Kaisa Koskinen. And uh, my, I did my PhD on, on the reception of uh, subtitled films. So, so my interest has been in reception. My original interest in research came about from, from the question of, well, who, who do we make translations for? Why do we make translations and how how do we know what the viewers think of subtitles and how do we know how, how viewers actually watch films with subtitles. So I was very interested in that, did my PhD on that, and after that I had the opportunity to work with Kaisa and Tutti, who, who, who have slightly different interests. Tutti Suojanen is she's from technical communication, so, so she, she is, uh, she's more of a usability expert. And, and Kaisa Koskinen is within translation studies and she has worked on, on institutional translation, for example. So, so I looked at how, how translation works in, in the EU, for example. And, and together we found this common interest in, in, in this uh, audience orientation, whether it's usability, whether you think of it as, as recep- reception, but this idea of of there, there being someone for whom a translate translation is always uh, aimed, and and this idea that that has a fairly long tradition in translation studies, that that we want to choose our strategies in order to uh, to serve the target audience, and this has been a theoretical approach, but there hasn't been all that much, uh, all the many practical tools uh, that would. Um, that would give translators a way to actually serve this target audience that translation theory tells us that we should be serving. So, so the idea with user-centered translation was to try to find new concrete ways of, uh, of analyzing the target audience, seeing who, who the audience of translation translations is, uh, and then trying to figure out what, what kinds of solutions we could uh, use to serve that audience, and my background in reception research was helpful in that, and and the other two authors brought brought other things into the equation, and and then we 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 built this model of user centered translation, uh, which understands uh, translation or uh, evaluating translation as uh, as a question of usability, seeing uh, seeing those who read translations. Uh, as users and thinking of uh, this interaction between translation and user um, 
as something that we can evaluate with the concept of usability that has been used in, in technology, like, like with user, user interfaces or uh, different kinds of technological uh, uh, implements. Uh, but but we, we try to bring that idea into, into looking at translations, because quite often translations are used for a purpose, like subtitles are used in order to be able to understand a film, or user instructions are used in order to be able to use a machine, for example. So, so we thought that that might be fitting, and, and, and we built this, this model around it, and now we are uh, trying to test it in different contexts and, and also offering it or these individual do- tools that we have developed or adapted into the translation context. We're offering them to professional translators and asking them whether they think that it might be a useful idea for them in their practical work. And finally, what do you see the field of audiovisual translation and more specifically subtitling, given your experience? Where is it going in the next five years? Is the human translator still involved? What do you see as substituted by the machine? I, I can't imagine human translators being completely substituted by machines. I, I would imagine that there's going to be more and more automation and there's the volume of subtitle materials I would imagine will keep growing as it has been growing in in the last years and decades there's going to be different kinds of platforms uh, different different methods of production and distribution which means that there's going to be more and more material to be translated and distributed internationally so so I would imagine that the work of subtitling is not going anywhere uh, but who does it, who, who does the subtitling, and which part of the subtitling process goes to the human uh, uh, actor. Uh, that, I think, is difficult to know. I, I would imagine that there's, there's all kinds of uh, projects going on, trying to de- develop more and more uh, sophisticated machine translation tools or uh, translation memories and different kinds of uh, automated uh, processes to 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 make the process more efficient and quicker and cost effective. Uh, so so it's it's changing, I think, and we don't really know. It's changing so quickly that we don't necessarily know uh, what's even possible in the next f- five years. So I don't think you can completely automate it. You you need need someone who is able to listen to the sounds and and look at the pictures and and think of the language and think of how to how to best fit the translation into the moving picture and not only to make a good translation but also to make it concise and and make it fit into the rhythm and and make sure that it sort of creates the illusion of spoken speech so that it's a natural kind of uh, replacement for the spoken dialogue in the film uh, but but also at the same time that it maintains the qualities of written language so that it's easy enough to to follow. So so there are so many different things, different um, questions that a subtitler needs to answer. So I, I I can't imagine that it could be completely automated, or if it is, then the quality of the uh, the subtitlers uh, won't be what we would like it to be. So, so I, I have faith that, that we need human subtitlers, but whether that, that is possible in this streamlined, uh, quick processes, that's another thing, and I don't know for sure. And I, th- I think there are signs of both kinds of developments. On the other hand, there are these, uh, these very efficient processes where tra- subtitlers don't necessarily have a lot of say, but then there are also different kinds of experimental uh, independent uh, productions where where subtitlers uh, do have a say and and ha- have an opportunity to to help the filmmakers to to create something something special. So 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 I would say that there are a variety of options avi- available in the next next few years and and I would hope that that the subtitlers themselves sort of promote their own skills and 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 are able to present themselves as experts of this kind of audiovisual communication and, and find their place in these productions. Dr. Tina Tuominen, 
Thank you very much. Thank you.